From flowers to chocolate to red hearts to red hots, there are plenty of ways to celebrate this Valentine's Day with your honey. Well, whatever your plans are, Valentine's Day just wouldn't be the same without famous couples we've looked up to over the years. On screen couples, that is. Joining me now is Melissa Henson, the program director for the Parents Television Council. Melissa, you just released 14 favorite on screen TV couples. But before you tell us the names, tell us why your organization made this list. Well, like it or not, we take a lot of our social cues from television. And so it's important uh, that we see healthy relationships being represented on television because it tells us something about the health of our relationships in our culture. Um, we did a study several years ago looking at the state of marriage on television, and we were very dismayed to find that quite often marriage is not presented respectfully on television. In fact, quite often uh, you are more likely to see a, a fair treatment of an adulterous relationship than you are to see a, a fair treatment of a, a committed, faithful, loving marriage on television. So I think it's important for us to evaluate the state of couples on television in order to evaluate the, the health of our uh, uh, relationships in the real world. Sure. Okay, we'll break it down for us. Who made the list? <laughs> well, I would say I would start out by saying that, you know, not every couple on this list is a perfect couple, but that's true in real life too. You know, we have our warts, we have our problems. Uh, but I think the common thread that that ties all these relationships together is that they work through their problems and at the end of the day they stay committed, they stay together. Um, so at the top of our list, Fred and Wilma Flintstone. <laughs> it's going back a few years, but it's a perennial favorite. Um, and for a lot of kids, you know, who grow up watching cartoons, that's one of the first uh, marriage relationships they're going to see on television is in, in cartoons. And so it's important that they see help, healthy, happy marriages on, on, in the cartoons that they're watching. Uh, we also chose um, some great shows from the 90s that a lot of folks grew up with. Um, we have uh, Jim and Pam from The Office. We saw their relationship blossom over the years, and they became a very strong and hap hap happy couple in the end. Uh, we have um, Fran and Maxwell from The Nanny, and um, Jay and Michael from uh, My Wife and Kids. Um, these are relationships that we watched over years and years and years and saw them struggle through difficulties together, but at the end they prevailed and came out together strong and, and committed. Uh, we have Jason and Maggie from Growing Pains, Deborah and Ray from Everybody Loves Raymond, um, Jesse and Rebecca from Full House, um, Paul and Jamie from Mad About You, uh, Tim and Jill from Home Improvement, Dan and Roseanne from The Roseanne Show, uh, Eric and Annie from Seventh Heaven, Corey and Topanga from Boy Meets World, Carol and Mike from The Brady Bunch, and our number one favorite TV couple is uh, Ricky and Lucy from I Love Lucy. It's going back a ways, but I think that's still a relationship that people get a lot of enjoyment watching. You know, I love Fred and Wilma, and you're so right about you know, kids forming their ideas about marriage because looking at your list, I, I, I had the exact thought about myself growing up watching the Flintstones and really getting an idea, you know, besides my parents, you know, I kind of got took ideas about marriage from them. So uh, it's very interesting. Uh, well, congratulations to Ricky and Lucy for topping the list. Um, tell us a little more about why you feel like they deserve the number one spot. Well, here again, you know, it's not that they always got along or that there, there was, a, you know, this uh, syrupy sweet relationship that's unrealistic. I think their relationship was very recognizable to people, very identifiable. Um, you know, sometimes they fought, sometimes they didn't like each other much, but at the end of the day, they, they recognized that their strength is in their union and they, they figured out a way to work through their problems together and they came out stronger in the end because of it. We're talking about the 1950s uh, for I Love Lucy. You know, I noticed there weren't too many recent couples on the list. What does this say about the direction of TV programming? Well, I think what we've seen in recent years is a trend away from shows that focus on the family, and they're more likely to be about friendships or work environments. Um, and, I, and I think that's, that's unfortunate, but as I say, when, when we did our analysis, this was going back seven or eight years ago, uh, we saw that already television was taking an attitude that marriage was, um, was you know, dismal, it was abysmal, it was, it was soul killing. We were not seeing um, healthy, happy relationships on television. And so given the choice between workplace comedies and, and that kind of portrayal of marriage, I think I'd, I'd prefer the workplace comedies, but best of all, best of all possible worlds would be to see more, more happy, healthy marriages, more happy, healthy couples on TV. 
Melissa Henson, happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. And to you too. Thank you. Thank you for your insights.